The next type is strengthening an argument, right? So this is like the author has given you an argument. Uh, then if there is something as an additional piece of information given, that statement, that additional piece of line should actually strengthen the argument that's being made by the author. So let's look at this. Right? Scientists do not work in an noisy place. So again, I have not given you, giving you any options here. I'm taking the same examples to show you, uh, you know, how the same piece of information could be used for framing different questions. Scientists do not work in a noisy place. Therefore, Emily does not work in a noisy place. You know, what is the argument the author is making here? Scientists do not work in a noisy place. Right? That's a key argument that he's making. And then he is assuming, uh, maybe the assumption is that Emily is a scientist. So he is coming to a conclusion that Emily does not work in a noisy place. So let's take a situation like this, right? Scientists, you know, uh, get new ideas in silent places, right? A silent atmosphere. Or maybe people, you know, uh, general people as well. So you see, scientists are supposed to think of new ideas, think of new experiments, etc. So that's why they do not work in icy place. So this statement, Scientists get new ideas in silent atmosphere would strengthen this argument, right? So scientists get new ideas in silent atmosphere compared to sitting in working in noisy place. That's why they do not work in noisy place and they work in a silent place. So things like this would be the argument, uh, additional lines, right? Additional lines or additional points, which would strengthen the argument, right? That is support or in favor or make this more strong, right? Let's look at this. The company X has developed a new product that uses metal A, which is toxic to kids. In order to protect our kids, we need to ban use of this product. So the argument is that there is a toxic product to the kids, right? So this product uses metal A, which is toxic to kids. In order to protect our kids, we need to ban. So as I said, right? So additional point could be something like the new product can be manufactured only by A, metal A can be manufactured by metal A only, right? By only using, by using only metal A. What am I saying is this new product can be manufactured only with metal A. There's no alternative for this. So what is the argument the author made, the key argument? The metal A which is used in new product is toxic to kids. So once I say the new product can be manufactured using only by metal A, so this is going to impact the kids and that's why we need to ban the product. This is again in favor of whatever the argument the author is making. That is what basically we need to look for in strengthening an argument. Understand the key argument in the piece of information and see which option would actually agree to it or make it more stronger. Let's look at the same piece of information. If highways were restricted uh, and only trucks with capacity of less than eight tons were allowed to run, most of the traffic would be forced on outside highways. Such a reduction in the amount of truck traffic will reduce the risk of collisions on highways. So here it says which of the following if true would strengthen the conclusion drawn in the second sentence. The conclusion drawn in second sentence, this is the second sentence. What is the conclusion drawn? Reduction in the truck traffic would reduce the risk of collisions on highways, right? This is the uh, conclusion that they have come up with. Reduction in the truck traffic would reduce the risk of collisions on highways. So which of these four points, if true, would actually agree with this, make this more stronger. Highways are experiencing overcrowded traffic mainly because of sharp increase in car traffic. Yeah, so I mean, so if there are, there is more car traffic, right? How would us moving out the truck traffic reduce the collisions? It would not agree to it, right? It would be irrelevant at max or maybe even like sort of weakens it a bit, but maybe I would say as a neutral statement. The author feels that reduction in truck traffic, basically less trucks on highways would reduce the collisions on highways. So having more cars, Right, highways are experiencing overcrowded traffic because mainly because of sharp increase in car traffic. Because this statement says there is a lot of car traffic in highways. So if even if this is true, how would they support this? Right? How would ha us seeing a lot of traffic in highways, car traffic, reduce the risk of collisions on highways? It would not. So it's it's at max neutral, if not weakening the statement. Many drivers of trucks would rather buy trucks with a capacity of less than eight tons than be excluded from the highways. Right. This is basically saying many truck drivers would buy trucks with capacity less than 8 tons than be excluded from highways. So because of all this story that uh, greater than 8 tons make them move out of highways, if most of the drivers actually prefer to actually buy trucks less than 8 tons, right? what would that happen? 
So let's say if there are only 100 trucks in this whole, uh, you know, uh, uh, country or place where they run on highway, of which 80 of them are 8 plus and 20 of them are 8, you know, less than 8 tons. Let's assume this scenario. If this rule made all the drivers, right, 100 drivers uh, carry less than 8 tons, would this actually reduce this traffic? No, right? You won't see reduction in truck, truck traffic which would obviously not lead to the reduce of uh, the accidents. So this statement seems to be a, a statement which would actually weaken, right? If you ask me, it's going to be weakening it. Why? Because if most of the truck drivers would prefer to buy trucks less than 8 tons, so it would not lead to the reduction in the truck traffic and that would not lead to the risk of collisions highway. Again, this is a wrong statement, right? It would not strengthen the conclusion. It's actually sort of weakening it. How would it weaken it? I'm saying if most of the people would prefer, as I said, all the people will now, because of this restriction, start buying smaller vehicles. I mean, the trucks with lesser capacity so that they will still run on highways. So there will be no reduction in the traffic. Hence, there will be no reduction in the collision of highways, which would not support this. Rather, it is in the negative, negative direction. The number of collisions that occur near highways has reduced in the recent years. But then, I mean, that would not have any relation with what's ha going to happen in this, right? The number of collisions in highways has reduced recent years. That's saying that now the accidents are less in number. Okay, if earlier there were 1000 accidents happening in a year, let's say now only 100 incidents are happening. It has reduced, yes. But then how would that actually support the statement that the uh, reduction in truck traffic would reduce the risk of collision in highways, right? It has no influence or relevance to it. The trucks that have a capacity of more than 8 tons cause a disproportionately large number of collisions on highways. This seems to be the correct option. See, it's saying that trucks which are greater than 8 tons are causing the large number of collisions on highway. So once I reduce them, I move them out. Obviously, the reduction in truck traffic would reduce the risk of collision on highways. So this is agreeing to what the conclusion is, right? Once we have uh, less number of vehicles, more than 8 tons, it will reduce the risk of collisions. So this is agreeing to it because, you know, most of the accidents are happening because of the trucks of 8 tons. So this statement is agreeing to this and that's why this is strengthening it. That's why this is the answer.